Fawaz Agerjez, ISIS, A History. In the book, ISIS, A History, author Fawaz Agerjez discusses the rise of the Islamic State, ISIS, and its impact on the world. The summary explores the early victories of ISIS, such as the seizure of Mosul and the rapid expansion of the group through Iraq, Syria, and Libya. Additionally, Gerges dives into the ideological differences between ISIS and Al-Qaeda, particularly in terms of territorial control and targeting Shia Muslims. Furthermore, the book examines the contributing factors to ISIS's rise, including the Arab Spring, the ongoing civil wars in the Middle East, and the exploitation of Sunni grievances. The Resilience of ISIS The unexpected rise of the Islamic State, or ISIS, in 2013 and 2014 took the world by surprise. With just a few hundred soldiers, the group managed to defeat the Iraqi military, which had been trained by the United States at a cost of roughly $25 billion. Though the West and the Middle East quickly learned to take the group seriously, it has shown remarkable resilience despite relentless bombings and ground offensives. While the caliphate was dismantled in Iraq, Syria, and Libya, ISIS continues to operate through cross-border networks, secret strongholds, and sleeper cells, which are spread out in Yemen, Egypt, and other places. The movement may have lost traction but it remains insidious and influential in creating havoc across the globe. ISIS's Rise to Power The rise of ISIS was due to the broken politics in the Middle East. Unlike its predecessor, Al-Qaeda, ISIS claimed territory and attempted to run a state. Its leader, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, challenged Al-Qaeda's leadership by claiming the title of Supreme Ruler of Muslims Worldwide. ISIS's focus was not primarily on Western targets but rather on wreaking havoc in the Middle East, targeting Riyadh, Baghdad, and Damascus. The group defied al-Qaeda's recommendations to stop attacking Shia targets and identified Shia Muslims as their real enemies. The rift between Shia and Sunni Muslims is the primary factor driving ISIS's rise, and by perfecting its anti-Shia, anti-Iranian rhetoric, ISIS appeals to a pan-Sunni identity. In this way, the group sought to cast itself as a benevolent defending force, despite its violence, by positioning itself at the center of efforts to stop a Shia ideology threatening to swallow the Muslim world. ISIS Origin and Extreme Ideology ISIS was born in Iraq and learned its tactics from the previous Ba'athist regime. It moved to Syria, claiming Raqqa as its capital and main source of income. Salafi jihadism forms its ideological foundation, reinforced by identity politics and extreme anti-Shia sentiment. It considers any competition, even from groups with similar ideologies, as a threat. The book delves into the origins, tactics, and ideologies of ISIS. ISIS's thirst for violence and blood has its roots in Iraq's ultraviolent past. Although there is no direct link between Saddam Hussein and ISIS, the group learned its vicious tactics from his regime. Iraq's dictatorship refused any dissent and ruled with fear and intimidation. ISIS mimics these ways. Moving into Syria, ISIS claimed the city of al Raqqa as its capital and main revenue source. Its income stems from oil, agriculture, crime, and taxing residents of the caliphate. Salafi jihadism and identity politics form the foundation on which ISIS bases its worldview. Added to this mixture is extreme anti Shia sentiment, which defines the group as hyper Sunni. ISIS considers the Nusra Front, a group developed on Baghdadi's orders, as its enemy for defying Baghdadi's call to join ISIS. Despite sharing almost identical ideologies, ISIS and al-Nusra became sworn enemies. ISIS's extreme intolerance of competition is evidenced by this conflict. ISIS Tactics of Sexual Violence ISIS has been effectively using rape, sexual slavery, and genocide as strategies for recruitment and conquest. Poor, directionless Sunni men are attracted to the group's promise of rebuilding the lost caliphate, providing them a cause worth giving their life. Initially, ISIS targeted Yazidi men, kidnapped thousands of women, and forced them into sexual slavery. 
Girls and boys are sold via contracts notarized by ISIS courts, with young children being the most valuable. ISIS continues to maintain a presence, directing a far-reaching campaign toward Sunni men. Although the group has lost turf in Syria, encouraged by the reluctance of Western nations to deploy ground troops, recruits continue to pour in. The Radicalization of Abu Musab al-Zarqawi Born into an impoverished family in Jordan, Abu Musab al-Zarqawi dropped out of school and was later imprisoned for sexual assault and drug possession. While in prison, he found religion and became radicalized. After his release, he set up a jihadist training camp near Iran and leveraged events in Iraq to pursue a more radical vision of Salafi jihadism. The dysfunctional political system in post-U.S. invasion Iraq and exclusionary policies of Prime Minister Nouri al-Maliki were two key driving forces behind the resurgence of ISIS, according to the book. ISIS's Rise to Power ISIS rose to power by learning from al-Qaeda's mistakes and capitalizing on the missteps of the government in Baghdad. Prime Minister Nouri al-Maliki's failure to integrate Sunnis into Iraqi society and politics led to discontent and protests, which were met with violent crackdowns. Maliki's support of Bashar al-Assad in the Syrian civil war further ignited tensions. In 2013, ISIS became a major force in Iraq, claiming responsibility for deadly attacks and prison escapes. As the group expanded to Syria, it repeated its pattern of sweet-talking communities to gain control, then engaging in a fatal purge of former allies. ISIS's disregard for compromise, even with Sunni Islamist rivals, made it distinct. Its brutality was most evident in the territory it captured, where journalists, dissidents, and anyone who posed a threat were kidnapped and killed. The Rise and Fall of ISIS in Syria the Arab Spring sparked a massive demand for political freedom in Tunisia, Egypt and elsewhere. While many dictators stepped down, President Assad doubled down on brutality, plunging Syria into a chaotic war that ISIS seized upon. Led by Baghdadi, the group initially operated stealthily in Syria, backing al-Nusra's fight against Assad. But in 2013, Baghdadi began broadcasting to the world that ISIS was the true force driving the anti-Assad fight. As the group consolidated power using Syria's oil fields to fund its operations, it paid fighters handsomely. This combination of military might and financial strength led to the perception that ISIS was the winning horse. However, due to overextension, ISIS is now on the ropes as its miscalculations continue to limit their group's growth and success. The ideology behind ISIS's resilience. ISIS's ideology plays a significant role in its resilience. Its ultra-conservative version of Sharia seeks to impose its mission of restoring Islamic unity and salvation. The organization's propaganda appeals to alienated young Muslims in Europe and poor, rural areas of the Middle East. Its social media presence is personable, and it's sleek, high-quality images perfectly designed to appeal to its target market. Although ending ISIS's hold on the Middle East is possible, the ongoing civil wars in Iraq, Syria, Libya, and Yemen nurture the organization, making it unlikely in the near term. New strategies are needed to cut off ISIS from this sustaining force. Undercutting ISIS requires Arabic states and their global partners to support the construction of legitimate state institutions governed by rule of law while reconciling conflicting ethnic and religious groups. It will require inventive ideas to revive shattered economies, provide education, and offer people hope. Despite significant setbacks in recent years, ISIS continues to present a severe challenge to global and regional stability. Gerges concludes that defeating ISIS will require a multifaceted approach, involving not just military and intelligence efforts, but also the support and development of legitimate state institutions, the rule of law, and reconciliation between ethnic and religious groups. Efforts to counter ISIS propaganda and its recruitment strategies are also essential in undermining the group's ability to replenish its ranks. Ultimately, the author calls for innovative ideas to rebuild and revive the shattered economies and societies affected by ISIS's violent quest for power.